So I'm standing here in this big orange target uh, trying to motivate two ideas that are rather unpopular. The first is that defecation on the Mississippi Delta, uh, America's Delta, one of the biggest river deltas in the world, is actually a good idea. And the second is that mixing that noble gesture <laughs> with the planting of cypress swamps is perhaps the only way that we can fix this vanishing gem. Every coast on this planet is under siege. Sea levels are rising, salt water is intruding further and further inland, and the big river deltas are seeing this rise in sea level first. Because the part of the delta cycle involves sinking or subsidence. So when a delta, when the river builds a delta, it does so for about a thousand years, and that delta becomes, that river becomes more and more inefficient, and so at that point it breaks a new pathway to the coast, and the new delta starts building land, and the old delta starts to sink and degrade. It's natural. So over the last 7,000 years, the net gains have exceeded the losses, and that is until we put a straitjacket on the Mississippi River with large levees. These levees shunt the lifeblood of wetlands straight out to sea, and that lifeblood becomes a monster. Because it triggers massive algae blooms, and these lead to giant hypoxic areas. So river deltas are losing elevation first, and America's delta is really the planet's poster child because it's losing wetlands faster than anywhere else on the planet. Oh, sorry. To try to lessen this degradation, we're actually knocking down levees and allowing reintroduction of the river to degraded wetlands. These river diversions are working, and we need many more. But a river diversion can, has to be right next to the river, and these river diversions can't flood people. And so they're great, but they're very limited in their scope, and they're only going to fix a small portion of America's delta. So we need to look elsewhere for the nutrients and the fresh water. And it turns out that secondarily treated wastewater shares a lot of properties with river water. It's nutrient rich and it's fresh and you can make it move. And these are all important fe features for wetlands. And unlike the river, Toilets are everywhere on the delta. And people are flushing millions of toilets a day on this delta. These are called assimilation wetlands, like the one shown here. And they're also enormously energy efficient because the electricity that would get spent on conventional tertiary sewage treatment is completely avoided, and these systems are self-sustainable. By the time that, oh, and this, this particular system here dumps four million gallons of treated wastewater every day. And by the time that wastewater hits that forest in the background, it's completely clean. So, just how bad off are America's Delta? We still have healthy pockets of swamp. Swamp 
is dominated by trees, those being bald cypress and water tupelo. And on the other end, we still have healthy areas of marsh, that low growing ground cover. But most of the delta is following this trajectory from healthy to relic to degraded. A relic swamp has the canopies knocked out of the trees. And so the forest floor is lit and ground cover is, is very uh, common. The degraded delta that has already lost most of the trees and is turning to open water. So if you project these habitat conditions onto space, it's downright depressing. This is the Moripaw Swamp where my team works. It's a couple hundred thousand acres. It's big. The red areas were healthy swamp a mere 60 years ago. The yellow areas, and now they're turning to open water. The yellow areas are turning into the red degraded areas as we speak. And the little pockets of green is the only healthy swamp left. Without exception, Every one of these is contiguous to moving fresh water. Throughout this swamp, we measure the growth of over 2,000 trees a year. We've done so for over a decade. And those trees are growing about the thickness of a credit card. What's worse is that over one third of these trees since the year 2000, when they were alive, are now dead. So America's Delta is truly running out of time. In contrast, in a nearby assimilation wetland, labeled outfall here, the trees are growing at least five times faster. These are, these are saplings that are only five years old. They're nearly 20 feet tall. So I'm just hoping uh, at this point that poop doesn't sound like such a bad thing. <laughs> but, 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 there's a hitch. And isn't there always a hitch? Here's our healthy assimilation wetland in the year 2007. And here it is from the, uh, from the air in 2008. Hundreds of acres converted over to water. Now the word on the street, of course, was that it was the wastewater to blame. That water must be poisonous. Through experimentation, However, we demonstrated that actually it's this beast that caused it. This is Nutria. It's a cocker spaniel sized rat introduced from South America. And like deer, Nutria can detect the increased protein content in plants caused by the increased nitrogen content in the water. And they flock to both river diversions and assimilation wetlands in mass, and they can destroy them extremely quickly. So we trick them by hiding the cypress inside of tubes. Do you all remember Hurricane Katrina? I'm sure if you live in, from around here, you, you certainly do, because Hurricane Katrina was a game changer. She knocked over 320 million trees. And the eye wall went right over Cypress Swamp. Here you can see that the brown areas are actually toppled over oaks, whereas that green ring is a band of cypress and tupelo with only a couple of branches knocked out. Similarly, the hardest hit area in Louisiana, St. Bernard Parish, 
Here we have a stand of cypress in the background, and it's about the only thing left standing down there after Katrina. And here's a young stand that also stood strong in Katrina. Uh, normally, I don't much care for rows and columns of trees, but don't these look like sentinels poised for the next storm? Katrina's storm surge was some serious when it hit New Orleans. A small buffer of cypress would have taken the waves right off of the top of the surge, and those waves are extremely destructive to levees. And guess what? There used to be a huge cypress swamp just south of New Orleans, east of St. Bernard, and it was killed by Mr. Go, the Mississippi River Gulf outlet. In the early 60s, Mr. Go was opened, salt water rushed in, and it killed over 63,000 acres of wetlands. Even more catastrophic, Mr. Go acted like a funnel in Katrina, and it funneled that storm right into New Orleans, right into St. Bernard. So through modeling, we were actually able to take Mr. Go out of the ecosystem, replant the wetlands, pull Katrina back out to sea, and roll her back in. Turns out that the flooding was reduced by 80%. So, I'm hoping that mixing poop and wetlands, poop and cypress trees is starting to make more sense because there's no amount of cypress swamp that you could put on America's Delta and have it be too much. Hurricanes are intensifying. More cypress would be great. Fortunately, Mr. Glow is now permanently closed, and plans are to restore that 30,000 acre area. We're going to take all of New Orleans' secondarily treated sewage effluent. 100 million gallons a day, push out the salt water, and make it amenable for Cypress and Tupelo again. In summary, Cypress swamps thrive with their feet in treated wastewater sustainably. They actually clean the wastewater they are energy efficient in doing so. They stand strong in hurricanes and they suck the energy right out of them. They also can take deeper levels of flooding than any other wetland type. So the very last ecosystem left standing in the midst of sea level rise is going to be Cypress Tupelo Swamp. And there's a five. Cypress swamps can decrease the rate of sea level rise. It's common knowledge that for over a century, we've been spewing huge amounts, enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and that this is a primary cause for sea level rise. We need to suck that carbon dioxide back out of the sky, stuff it into wood, or bury it 
for good. This is carbon sequestration, and woody plants are pretty good at it. Amazingly, though, wetland forests, cypress and mangroves, are up to 10 times more effective at sequestering carbon than any other ecosystem. And once that carbon is sequestered, Cypress locks it up for over a thousand years. In closing, if we are going to succeed in fixing America's Delta, and hopefully we will, it's going to take a lot of people. That 30,000 acre area that I was previously shown, it alone will require the planting of 2.6 million trees. And that is just a splinter of what we need to save America's Delta. So we got to raise the bar and in the next decade plant tens of millions of seedlings. And when I say we, I mean the proverbial we, not we here, but we all over the place. So come to New Orleans for a few days and enjoy a very rich, diverse culture. And in doing so, I guarantee you will take a few good shits. <laughs> and those shits will make their way to an assimilation well and, and do some good. But more importantly, more importantly, strap on a pair of waders and volunteer to plant seedlings for a day. I have to be honest, uh, waist deep in the mud is not a, a wonderful experience, but it is remarkably rewarding to finish a day knowing that you have planted a bunch of trees that are very likely to live for a thousand years. Thank you.